The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to this edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here each and every single week. If you want to get in touch with us, the email address is feedback at ami.ca or you can drop us a message on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada and use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. By my side, as he is each and every single week, Double Tap TV's co-host, Stephen Scott. Stephen, this week we are answering one of the most common questions blind people are asked about television. Stephen, how do blind people watch TV? Do you know, Mark, it sounds like a really odd question to ask, doesn't it? But you're right, I've lost count of the times that I've been asked that question. In fact, the last time I bought a TV in a store, I was asked why I wanted a big TV, you know, because I can't see it. So to him and anyone else who wonders that question, well, here is the answer. Firstly, I don't live alone. My wife and I have a visual impairment, uh, but we can still see a little bit. And even though we don't get a huge amount of joy out of TV, we still like to use our, our, our vision as much as we can, what's left of our sight. Um, also, believe it or not, we have friends who occasionally visit, although maybe not at the moment, granted, but, you know, they occasionally do. And I'm sure they probably don't want to enjoy Netflix on a speaker sitting in the corner. Uh, okay, I'll buy that. It makes sense, although I'm not really sure about the, the friends bit, but I'll believe you. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a dumb question, though, right? I mean, you know, I know you could see a little bit, but how do you read what's on the screen, like the menus or the TV guide? Yeah, exactly. That's not a dumb question at all. In fact, it's the right question to ask. So let me dive in to what I've got here, because I've got the Sony X-H95 model uh, right next to me here in my studio, kindly sent to me by Sony in the UK. Now, it has a huge 55-inch full LED screen capable not only of 4K Ultra HD, but also the ability to push high dynamic range as well for really clear and vivid images, which is brilliant if you are low vision and you really need bright, clear images in front of you. It's one of those smart TVs as well, and I'll get into the detail on that. It's powered by Android. And this is where things get rather interesting. Uh, as it runs on Google's operating system, it allows you two methods of setup. The standard setup that you might expect on screen using the bundled remote control, which is fine if you can see what you're doing. Uh, if you want to have a go at setting it up on your own though, well, you can use your Android phone, not Apple. Hmm. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that a bit later. Um, but yeah, you can connect to the TV from your Android phone uh, from the outside, which will link your Google account and share your Wi-Fi with the TV. Not really sure why iPhones can't do this, but um, hey, why not? Uh, you've got to use Android and it is an Android phone and Android TV, so okay, fine. But you might still need a bit of sighted assistance because text-to-speech support is actually only available after initial setup. Yeah, makes sense of that. Um, but you know what? If you're on your own, use your Be My Eyes app or use your Ira subscription or just grab someone nearby in the house who's got working eyes to get you started. And if you're an iPhone user, well, you will have to do this anyway for the entire setup. Now, in terms of the accessibility settings in this TV, there are a couple of options. For low vision users, there's the ability to increase the size of the text across the entire system, which helps you better read the screen's menus and guides. And that is how someone with low vision would be able to do that. For those who are totally blind, there is a screen reader built in. Now, this might get a little bit confusing, so bear with me on this. Android users will know that the screen reader on Google's platform is TalkBack. However, on Sony's on, on TV lineup here, it's called Screen Reader. You'll find TalkBack as well in there, but it's a separate app. <sighs> Still with me on this, Mark? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following along. I promise you, I am here. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Um, but once this TV is set up, here's the key thing. You can turn on the screen reader using the accessibility shortcut on the remote control. It took me ages to find this. It's actually the mute button, so I'll save you a Google search. It's the mute button on your remote. And once the screen reader is activated, which is really the only function of the accessibility shortcut, but you can change that later. A blind user can now take full control of the TV. You can navigate the menus, everything you see on screen, whether it be display or screen information or brightness level, all of that will be read back to you. Uh, you can also adjust the speed of the voice as well, which is handy. Uh, and I will say, I've got to say with the Sony screen reader, it's snappy, it's very reactive as well. I've tried a number of these TVs in the past, 
They're generally pretty sluggish, slow to react, a bit like myself, to be honest. Um, but not the case here. Uh, it's a good voice as well, not too verbose, not giving you too much information, just what you need. And I can now at least use most of the TV. Now I say most, unfortunately with smart TVs at the moment, blind users always hit a few barriers off the bat. And the first of those is third party applications. Now in all smart TVs at the moment, some work and some don't. Now, while I can't speak to every single app out there on the platform, it's safe to say the majority don't, sadly. Now, for those using this TV with an aerial, you can turn on audio description, uh, but on individual apps like Netflix, etc., you have to manually turn it on unless you already preset it as a preferred language on another device like an iPhone or an Android phone. Now, I mentioned TalkBack earlier. That's the default screen reader on most of the Android devices. Uh, but as I also mentioned, that's not the case on Sony TVs. The option's there, but they've chosen to develop their own. Um, th there is a difference between the two. Um, and in my mind, the Sony screen reader, as I say, is much snappier, uh, much nicer voice, much more reactive. TalkBack, on the other hand, not so much. A bit more unresponsive, if I'm honest. And I, that's not great. Um, the voice on Sony's is much nicer. Top back just feels a bit more verbose. You're getting a lot of beeps and clicks and not getting that instant reaction if you want. Now, if you go for one of these models, you can let us know which you think is best. You may prefer top back over Sony's one. It's entirely up to you. In conclusion, firstly, I need to separate out the TV from the third party apps installed. The TV itself is an absolute joy to use and the most responsive I've ever used with a screen reader built in. I'd say it's up there with the Apple TV and its voiceover accessibility. The screen is bright, it's vivid, with options for movie scenes, gaming, and all of that. The remote's sturdy, it even has a backlight built in to see the buttons in the dim light, handy little feature. And the remote also has tactile dots to denote various buttons on it, like volume up and down and program up and down. Wow, honestly, I did honestly didn't realize how much was already baked into the TVs. And what's best is that it, you know everything's already there. And even for someone who has vision, things like the larger text feature, I could see myself using that at times just to see what's on the screen because, you know, time to time, it, 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 it's impossible to see what's there. Exactly, Mark. I mean, Sony aren't the only player in town, though. Coming up, we'll have our co-host on Double Tap Canada over on AMI Audio. He's going to be joining us. That's Sean Priest to tell us about his thoughts on the new Samsung TV. And I'm going to be talking about TCL TVs a bit later on as well. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a chance to catch your breath there because that was a little bit of a, of a review. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. It is Double Tap TV. If you guys want to get involved, it's feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, reach out at Double Tap Canada and use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Let us know what TVs you're using at home and what features you love the most. We'll take a quick break and come back with Sean Priest. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys, as always, for being here. If you're not already following us on Twitter, go ahead and do that right now. We'll give you a couple seconds here. It is at Double Tap Canada. And if you use the hashtag Ask Double Tap whenever you tweet at us, we'll field the questions on an upcoming show. And we've got really cool stuff coming down as we continue this exciting season of Double Tap TV. Of course, if you want to email us, it's feedback at ami.ca. I am Marco Flalo. Alongside me is Stephen Scott. And this week, we're welcoming our co-host from Double Tap Canada, which airs every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio. His name is Sean Priest. Hey, uh, Sean, good to have you here with us on Double Tap TV this week. I mentioned having the Sony TV in the last segment, but uh, we want to talk about one of your uh, TVs that you've got in the house and uh, your feelings on accessibility. Firstly, welcome back to the show. Well, of course, I don't have the latest and greatest one, Stephen. I'm not Mr. Stephen Scott. I've got a 2017 Samsung Series 8 TV, and I've got to say, I love it. Accessibility makes all the difference. TV sort of went out of our life for a long time because it, would, it just wasn't accessible. It was a pain. Both me and my partner are blind. And um, yeah, just sort of moved away from TV. But having accessibility back on the Samsung is great. And um, yeah, it's, it's made a difference. The TV is part of family life again, which is, which is strange. But um, yeah, so for me... Um, as I said, both me and my partner, uh, our vision is at a level where 
Really, we need a screen reader to read the system menus or the EPGs. But if we go into the Samsung accessibility options, there are other options there. So if you do have low vision, you are covered as well. So for example, things like the TV settings menu. If you go into the accessibility options, of course, you do also have high contrast mode. So it would be white text on a black background or yellow text on a blue background. Again, makes it far easier to see if you've got low vision. So they're great as well. Um, aside from that, you can also make the, the text of the menus and also the text of program information or the electronic program guide. You can make that far bigger as well. So you can change that to a large font. Um, so if you do have low vision, there are options there, which is great. Also, if you're hearing impaired, there's accessibility features there for you. Now, this isn't necessarily an accessibility feature, but um, there is Bluetooth connectivity. So you can take the audio from the TV and throw it out to a Bluetooth external speaker. And of course, if you do have a Bluetooth enabled hearing aid, you can connect it to that. So there is that feature as well, which actually uh, I think is great. My mum is hearing impaired and, you know, every time she comes around, usually we got to have the TV at such a level, no one else can really bear it. So having that option is really good. Uh, moving on from that and, and to the option that I really need and the option that I use all the time, of course, is the screen reader. Now on Samsung, the screen reader is called Voice Guide and um, it works really well. It, it just, it changes the whole thing um, <laughs> because I'm able to turn on the TV and it sounds so simple, but turning on the TV and be able to flick through the channels and be told what program is on and what program is coming up next makes a huge difference. Um, aside from that, it can also read the electronic program guide so I can browse through what's coming on you know, TV later on today or even through the week. And uh, depending on which version of the Samsung TV, of course, you can also um, use your personal library. So you can, set, um, you can set recordings. So I want to record that TV program at that time. And then you can browse through the library of the recordings you've made previously. And of course, all accessible. Fantastic, makes a huge difference. Now, to enable the screen reader, um, it's not a massive procedure that you've got to go through. Um, on my smart remote for the Samsung TV, simply hold down the mute, or the, sorry, the volume button, hold it down for a few seconds, and much like you would on a, an iPhone, it will come up with a shortcut accessibility menu. And you can turn on the voice guide from there, um, or, you can hold down the um, voice assistant button on your Samsung remote and simply ask, turn on voice guide, and it will come on. The, the voices aren't quite as great as, uh, or quite as varied as you will find on other, you know, on your Windows screen reader or your smartphone screen reader, um, but they get the job done. I love the Samsung TV. What more do I need to say? That is Sean Priest, everybody. You can hear him alongside Stephen Scott and myself every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio. We've talked about Sony. We've talked about Samsung. We're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about my favorite brand, which is TCL. Stick around. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am Marco Flalo alongside me, Stephen Scott. Stephen, we've talked about Sony, we've talked about Samsung, but there's another brand that is becoming more and more popular in North America, and that brand is TCL. I don't know if you've heard uh, too much of TCL overseas, but they make some of the best big screen TVs with a price point that I promise you cannot be beat. And I'm here in my basement. I've changed venues, we've got some more natural light here. And this is one of the rooms in my home that has a TCL television. Full disclosure, big fan of the company. Uh, I have a TCL TV in every single room in my house. The reason is, is because the cost point makes it so affordable. Here we've got a 48 inch TCL television. The cool thing about TCL TVs and really all these smart TVs is they're like big smartphones. They really run on their own operating system. Some are Android based, some have Google's platform. Some even have the old Palm OS, which they call WebOS now. But this one runs on the Roku platform. 
Now, Stephen, you and I have talked about Roku many a times. They make these great media players that allow you to download different apps, whether it's your Disney Plus app, your Netflix app, or any Amazon Prime. Think of an app that you want to download to your TV and use to make that smart TV more enjoyable. And it's built into the actual Roku TVs, and especially the TCL brand of Roku TVs. Now, they do make other TVs that have different platforms as well, but I'm focusing on the ones in my homes, which are all Roku based. Now, the cool thing about the Roku TVs, other than being able to, to download the apps and enjoy everything is that it actually is the operating system of the television so you can do things like naming your input whatever you want customizing the icons all the picture settings and everything is very familiar especially if you've used Roku media players in the past I'm gonna reach back here I'm gonna show you the remote that comes with all of these televisions it's a familiar Roku TV media player style remote. So you've got the up, down, left, right, but it's a small form factor. Your volume is on the right-hand side of the remote along with your mute. And all your controls are there with even speedy controls that let you go to Netflix, CBS, um, Roku, even Google Play really quickly as shortcuts directly on the controller itself. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, I was talking earlier about the Sony remote. Uh, it's quite a big remote. It's quite a bulky remote, tons of buttons on there. Trying to find the right ones can be a bit of a challenge. So the idea of having that really small, simple to use, easy to understand remote control, that can be really helpful. No, absolutely. And I'm going to actually turn this TV on for you so we can kind of take a look through the interface together. Because really, you know, it, it is the whole Roku experience right there on the television. And you can see right here as I move away that you've got your home, your feed, your search, your streaming channels. I've got an Xbox plugged into this television. I've got a Nintendo Switch. I've got actually two Xboxes. And here you can see all my apps right there. Netflix, CBS All Access, YouTube, Prime Video, even Apple TV. TCL TVs are now completely compatible with Apple HomeKit, which means you can airplay content to it. I've even got a streaming Sonos bar on this particular television, which you can add very easily to these televisions, which is very cool. They come in all shapes and sizes. They've got a couple different series. You've got the four series, the five series, the six series. This is a four series. And to give you an example of the cost, as I talked about earlier, Stephen, this four series or a four series at 55 inches will run you $499 Canadian. Okay, so that's a, an insanely affordable price. I now know why you gravitate towards them, uh, because you're cheap, obviously, uh, but also because you get good quality, right? So uh, I know you've raved about these. I know you've raved about Roku and TCL as a brand, but... What about accessibility on these TVs, Mark? Do they stand up to the others that we've talked about? Uh, I, I probably should have anticipated this question, mm -hmm. giving, giving, of course, the title of the show and oh. everything you're going to ask me about here. Yep. Here he goes. Sighted guy. Not thought it through. Oh, but wait a second. I have, I have the solution here, okay? Wait, wait a second. I have the solution here. Thankfully, I have on speed dial on my phone someone who works at TCL. Well, with, with so many with so many of uh, those TVs in the house, I should think so as well. Hey, Bruce, Bruce, it's 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 Mark Mark Aplalo from Double Tap TV. Hey, hey, Mark, how are you? What's happening, guys? This is Bruce Walker. He's a product evangelist, representative of TCL in North America. Bruce, we're, we're talking big screen TVs, and one of the things that everybody kind of called me out on is accessibility when it comes to TCL TVs. Can you talk a little bit about the accessibility features on these TVs? Absolutely. Yes. Our our goal at TCL, you know, we want everybody to you know enjoy more is our tagline. Um, so we have some great features built into our TVs, whether it's our uh, TCL Roku TVs or or Android TVs, we have some great features uh, for accessibility to let everybody enjoy enjoy it more. Uh, of course, uh, all of our TVs have closed captioning built into them. And a real interesting thing that that's come up of late uh, to get a little nerdy, because our TVs are are so bright and vibrant now, we've heard some feedback from customers that the the lettering on the closed captioning can be almost distractingly bright. So now we've got a whole range of settings for uh, brightness and transparency and font on, and things like that to make it more enjoyable. Um, a great thing we have on both Roku and Android, uh, named a little bit differently, but basically is an audio guide um, that can be turned on very easily so that when you're, if you're navigating your way through the menu, the TV will announce where you are in the menu system. So if you want to go to brightness, just follow the guided prompts and it'll get you to um, adjusting anything on the TV that you want to. Um, and then on our Roku TVs, uh, with our, our app or our remote, advanced remote control, you have a great voice search. So you can push a button and say, you know, watch Expedition Unknown on Discovery Go, and it'll automatically start playing it for you. Um, of course, we've got compatibility on our TVs with um, with Google Home, with Alexa, uh, with the new updates on our four, newer 4K TVs. You have Apple HomeKit. 
and of course, a real big win uh, as far as accessibility goes, I think, is on our Android TVs is having uh, Google Assistant built in. So not only can you do great search and finding and launching of content, but you can find out things like the weather and things like that all by a simple uh, push the button on the remote control. So uh, when it comes to accessibility, um, in addition to all the great things that TCL TVs bring to the market, uh, we want to make sure that every customer out there gets the, the chance to enjoy our TVs to the best of their ability. Bruce Walker, guys, that's Bruce Walker from TCL. Bruce, thanks for letting me call you. Uh, we're going to have you on an upcoming show to talk more about TCL alone, okay? I promise. Absolutely. Hope you win the grand prize for phoning a friend. You know, one of the things Bruce didn't mention is that there's the actual Roku app that you can download to your smartphone. So this means if you've got voiceover and all those features enabled on your phone, you can control the TV even better. But not only that, there's things like Bluetooth audio, where you can actually listen to the audio of the TV on more than one device as well. They call this the wife saving or the marriage saving uh, feature, which allows allows you to quietly listen to your TV or whatever's on it, any of your smart apps, while someone next to you might be sleeping. So a very, very cool offering. I love these things in my house. That's why I've got them in absolutely every single room. It is the TCL televisions. Check them out. They've got series three, four, five, six, all the way to the eight series, which this year is going to be featuring 4K and even 8K across the entire lineup. Hey, as I always say, not everyone who is blind can see nothing at all. The good thing is, though, Mark, there's something for everyone in today's show, right? And on that point, if we have time, I just want to put in a few honourable mentions. Just to say Panasonic have been selling talking TVs back uh, since uh, 2012, actually, uh, which announced on-screen information and the most important menus like the banner information, accessibility menu and volume controls of speech. The electronic program guide does not for some reason. Uh, Apple TV was launched with a feature called VoiceOver, which is their screen reader. I mentioned it earlier. And that enables access to video on demand services and TV catch up apps, but does not show standard broadcast television. And finally, Fire TV also have speech via its VoiceOver, uh, Voice View, I should say, screen reader. So, so many different screen readers of different names. You can browse Amazon's catalog using the voice search function and view content using that screen reader. Third party apps are not supported though. Like the Apple TV, it does enable access to video on demand services and TV catch up apps, but does not again show standard broadcast TV. And I'm really looking forward to trying out the new Fire TV Edition TVs from JVC to see how accessible those are. Lots of options for you guys to choose from. Of course, this week we talked Sony, we talked Samsung, we talked TCL. Thank you guys for being here on this week's edition of Double Tap TV. Again, if you want to reach out, follow us on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada. Use the hashtag Ask Double Tap whenever you tweet to us. And of course, if you want to send an email, it's feedback at ami.ca. On behalf of Sean Priest and Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. We'll talk to you again next week. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Flalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Karen Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP, content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.